What's up, y'all? It's Daniel, your Shumalier. Longtime fans of the channel will know that being a Texan born in Austin and attending the University of Texas, I bleed orange, as well as maroon and gold for Texas State and Central Michigan University. And I have attended many a Longhorn football game, and I'm always struggling to find the right kind of shoes to wear to the game, not just for comfort, but also matching purposes. Because as you can see, Texas is a Nike school, and there's no way I'm gonna cross brand and wear the three stripes or Puma or New Balance or Asics to a Nike school. So when I saw that Nike was releasing their Venture Runner women's shoe, and it was in a similar UT colorway, and it was very inexpensive and affordable, I thought I have to have that shoe. At the very least, I can try it on for the video and hopefully wear it to UT games this year so I can match with the burnt orange and white, which is usually burnt orange and khaki shorts and, or jeans, some sort of variation. But the burnt orange is the most important. Mixing up vintage design with a modern twist, the Nike Venture Runner shoes mix up the best of both worlds for a standard silhouette. This casual speaker is an 80s inspired silhouette with a breathable cushion design. It has a suede upper for a retro track inspired look with airy mesh trim for breathable wear. Reflective dots, zigzag stitching, and Nike sports wear on the heel clipper there for premium detailing. Your lightweight foam midsole is combined with a cushy sock liner for elevated comfort. This rubber waffle inspired sole adds Nike DNA, optimum traction, and durability. This Nike Venture Runner women's shoe in the coconut milk, sesame, black, rugged orange colorway retailed for 70 US American dollars and is currently sold out on the Nike.com website. However, you can find this colorway and other colorways on the Kohl's website and they are going for sale at the time of this taping for $59.99. Now, when it comes to fit, I'm normally a size nine across the board. That's Ultra Boost, Air Force Ones, Jordan Ones, New Balance, Asics, Pumas, etc. I ordered a nine, which was, again, my true to size. And I did find that the shoe fit ever so snug. I'm not sure if it's because it's a women's shoe or because it's a runner's shoe. So I should probably correct myself and say I ordered my size nine in men's, which is a size 10 and a half in women's. And I have to wonder had I gone up to an 11 if this would have fit my foot just a little bit better. I did wear it at the end of the day after my feet had swollen. So I feel like maybe if I remove the insole, the shoe would fit just fine. But if you have worries about how your feet are gonna fit into this shoe or you have wide feet, you may consider going up half a size in your men's shoe size, which would mean you would order two full sizes bigger in women. Otherwise, true to size is only one and a half sizes larger. So again, in my case, size nine men, size 10 and a half women. And when it comes to comfort, this isn't React, this isn't Air, it's a normal foam midsole. So it's pretty much the technology that we grew up on, except for Air. And for some people, that firm touch, that firm squish is just what they like when they walk around or stand or run or cheer or do anything on their feet. For others, they may long for the days of Air or React or Zoom or any of the combinations of these comfort technologies that Nike offers. I will say that the upper mixed with the midsole do offer a nice ride. I don't think my feet will feel better at the end of the day than had I been walking on air or zoom or react or boost, but I certainly don't think my feet will be as tired or hurt as much had I wore any kind of Jordan 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, etc. Because as we know, many of those silhouettes are clearly not as comfortable as a lot of the other silhouettes that Nike offers. Lastly, it has been suggested that this colorway gives off Mars Yard vibes. And honestly, I can see it. I think that if the swoosh was a little bit more red, the back heel tab was a little bit more red, one could argue that this is like a Mars Yard 2.7 or 2.1 or a Mars Yard Junior. And I'm down with that. And as I have no plans to customize this shoe, I definitely think that this will be perfect for UT wear because, well, just look, it matches pretty well, doesn't it? You wear some khaki shorts, or you wear some khaki cargo shorts, or you wear some khaki pants. There's a lot of burnt orange and khaki at the games, what can I say? I think it's gonna work just fine. It's gonna match and it's low cut. It's gonna breathe pretty well. And the foam's gonna be okay because once you get in the stands, you're only standing and sitting down and standing. And then walking down from the top of the stadium, hopefully not with your head down because UT underperformed yet again, did not live up to the reputation or the hype or all the money they spend on coaches and players. But at least you'll have a nice pair of shoes that matches your overall burnt orange and white and khaki aesthetic. Or you can just say it's an economical Mars Yard shoe. 
So what do you folks think about the Nike Venture Runner women's shoe, especially in this burnt orange Mars Yard colorway? I dig it. I think it's fine. If you're a UT fan or any other school that uses some sort of burnt orange or khaki or suede or stone or white, hey, then this shoe might match for you. Or you just might like those colors. Or you could just say, again, it's a baby Mars Yard, a Mars Yard Junior, the stepchild of the Mars Yard, however you want to play it. Either way, let us know in the comment section down below what you think about this silhouette and colorway. So to all of you out there, wherever you are, Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and just chill till the next episode.